So, like, let's just start off with, uh, I want to know the vibes in the press box before we get to the ballad of Billy okay. Jean. Someone is already mad that this is this nickname is taken off. Listen, Billy Why? Jean's the Stonewash Stallion. The Stonewash Stallion is a good one. The Ooh. Denim Delivery Man is a good one. <laughs> okay. uh, the Bell Bottom Bomber. Ooh. I don't care what you call him, but you had a hell of a day yesterday. What were the vibes in the press box when he's going deep and they're taking all these deep shots and they're so beautifully thrown and dropped in the bucket? Like, because that's not something you guys saw routinely in the off season. So, like, what was the vibes in the press box? I think my buddy Mickey Ryan from 1045 said it best. Uh, I don't know if it was the second touchdown or the third touchdown, but at some point in the midst of the festivities where it was very clear at that point, the direction that this game was going and the narrative that was being the, the web that was being woven by Will Levis and the things we're going to have to talk about him this week from this game. He leans back in his chair and just laughs to himself and kind of says to himself, I'm just happy to be here, guys. It's just I'm having a good time. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. What a time to be alive. Um, th that That is generally the vibe. It was surprise at first. And I'd say after that first touchdown, it was, you know, less a, wow, look at Will Levis did. And because that was his least impressive touchdown pass of the day, he just threw it up there and an elite athlete went and make, made a play and, and committed offensive pass interference. Always commit off offensive pass interference, boys and girls. You should always do that. And a wily veteran like D-Hop is uh, – really one of he the masters of that <laughs> he's the yeah he's the opa opi guy and he he was showing that in that first touchdown pass but really that second one and the third one and then you you know you're, you're waiting for the mistake that's kind of about halfway through the game things were going well personally i was kind of sitting there like okay when's the rookie mistake coming when's he going to throw the ball right to a defender when's he going to take a sack at a really inopportune time and he almost to, to be fair, he did almost throw the ball right to a defender on that pass where he tries to throw it away at the feet of Chig. It hits the defender in both hands. He ends up dropping it. But ultimately, and that was, that was the really kind of a good play by the defender. And it was a good like, play by the defender. Yeah. And it was the right idea by Levis. He just probably could have put the ball in a, a safer yeah. position. But the point is that which was of no consequence, ultimately, was the closest to a mistake that you really could find from his entire game. And so the vibe in the press box was high. The excitement level, I mean, the past couple of games at home in Nissan Stadium, we, you know, a, a lot of the folks that have to re reach deadlines with their stories or get as many quotes as possible after the game, you know, they're writing up their story towards the end of the game as we're seeing where things are going. And then at some point, there's a mass exodus when the, the moment in the game, you can feel like we're not going to miss anything. We can go ahead and head down and get our seats and get ready for the for the interviews. There's a mass exodus of everybody. And that usually happens in the last minute or so of the game and then we all rushed down there the excitement was so palpable in this game a game that was not over people started heading downstairs earlier than i've ever seen them head downstairs i mean it was like i cannot wait to go talk to mike vrabel and will levis and deandre hopkins about this game i cannot wait to go get the temperature of the room in that locker room and to be fair it was one of the more enjoyable uh instances of having to cover all the activities down there in the, in the locker room, because everybody was in a very good mood. The vibes were high. The jer I think the jerseys, the alumni weekend, everything I tweeted out before the game, as I did last Sunday night, when the Eagles were wearing their Philly green or their, uh, their uh, Kelly green throwback jerseys. I, I tweeted that day. Like some of y'all think that the Eagles are going to lose in these magnificent jerseys. That's strange. And then I tweeted the same thing yesterday. Like, do y'all really think the Titans are going to lose in these jerseys? There's you just can't. The vibes picks are undefeated. I think that the Titans should do everything in their power to wear them as much as humanly possible. Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I just the vibe in the Lions household was it goes from seeing Malik Willis fumble. And I'm just like, I just went up there. It's like this this fucking idiot team. <laughs> like what? And I like I put it out on X. I'm just I just throw my hands up and I go, are you fucking kidding me out yeah. loud? And Lauren's behind me and I go and she goes, what happened? I was like, well, these fucking idiots decide they're going to put Malik Willis out there by like the fifth play. And of course, this guy fumbles and then he shows no effort to recover from it because don't it was boo, a though. bad snap. Don't boo. Yeah, don't boo him, though. Don't you dare. And boo. Uh, I was just like, I just threw my hands up. And then Will Levis, you know, the defense looks pretty good. And we'll talk about everybody that's not Will Levis. And then Will Levis just succeeded. Any, I, I mean, for this game, I had moderate expectations. I was thinking, okay, like, you know, a little bit over maybe, I'm thinking like 198, 
one touchdown, an interception, and a rushing touchdown. Like, I wasn't thinking anything crazy. Right. And and then I'm watching him, you know, go to the line, take it right up to, like, the, the one-second mark and, and get the ball hiked, make all these adjustments and everything. And there's just so much that he did. I'm like, that dude looks like an NFL quarterback. That dude looks like he has been playing NFL football <laughs> – for at least two years, for two yep. complete seasons. And I'm like, credit, and this is not being given out a lot to anywhere. Right. Or anywhere that I've seen. Credit to the staff. Because the staff got him ready. Yeah, they did. The staff, the staff has taken his progression, and we're talking about a guy that was injury-prone, indecisive in college, um, kind of, you know, just had his ups and downs, and he ended up looking like a competent pro that was able to use his arm talent, use his, uh, and use his legs to make plays where really Ryan Tannehill was having a problem with that. Malik Willis has shown to have a problem with that. So to me, I look at it all, and I'm thinking, this guy way way exceeded had have exceeded everybody's expectations even his own family like nobody thought that he was coming out and doing no. four touchdowns zero no. interceptions and looked as efficient and as competent as he did with complex stuff that the titans quarterbacks have traditionally struggled with on a team that had only had two passing touchdowns thus far like it, it, it was it was the situation as well right trying to anticipate what he'd be able to do with this cast of characters based on what we've seen from them so far this season. I I really am. I'm with you. I'm struggling to think of a prediction you could have had before that game that was reasonable and better than what he did. And I talked about this on the hot read podcast yesterday, which is a great episode. You should go listen to as soon as you're done listening to our episode here. Um, I, I feel like, and I don't want to put a hard ceiling on him because, you know, it's his first game. You'd imagine he can do better than that. But in the immediate, like this season, the next two, three, four, five games, if Will Levis is the starter for those games, I feel like this game kind of established what a ceiling for him looks like. That's not to be a downer necessarily. I do think it's fair to point out the offensive line deserves their flowers from this game. Mm -hmm. They did a very good job setting him up for success, giving him time to take shots downfield. Uh, which he did many times. Eventually, you're going to face a pass rush that is, I mean, the Atlanta yeah. pass rush is On just, Thursday. <laughs> yeah, on Thursday, you're going to face one better. Yeah, absolutely. And and when he's not kept so clean, when he's forced to navigate the pocket, extend a play, you know, get off schedule, does the decision-making start to become a factor? Does, um, you know, do you start to see some of those, that rookie panic set in a little bit and he makes a really poor uh, mistake? Like, the floor is not set yet. And so I think people should temper their expectations for what the baseline of Will Levis is. I don't think this is what it is, but at the same time, you can be excited because this was kind of, and this is the, what I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, Zach, because I, I talked to a number of buddies who are Titans fans and watched the game as pretty casual fans yesterday, trying to get their perspective on what they felt watching this after having watched Ryan Tannehill so much this season. And the resounding answer I got was, that it was a real breath of fresh air. And there was an element of sometimes when your team's in a rut, you just kind of need to change up. And that's kind of what it felt like. But something that a couple people compared it to, which I don't necessarily disagree with thinking back to my own experience with this game. It felt a little bit like that Denver game when Marcus is benched for Ryan, not to say that Will Levis is infinitely better than Ryan Tannehill is right now, but just from an athleticism standpoint, ability to, take hits and navigate the pocket and extend plays and all and this decisive decisiveness on his throws willingness to take shots downfield like it's not as dramatic as going from Mario to Tannehill but that same energy that same feeling as a fan watching that breath of fresh air step into the offense and do what Will Levis did yesterday I don't think that's too far off base I got a couple of ways I want to take this but at first I want to just want to answer the question directly without proposing something different okay. but I I am like I'm in a may I'm stunned. I think that's the best way to to put it is like I'm sure. stunned. And I think 
I would disagree with one of your points on there that this isn't as dramatic as a as a change from eight to seventeen. Maybe it is because I do. I I okay. think Ryan Tannehill has not played well this year. No. In fact, I would almost go to say that I think he's played worse this year than he did in twenty twenty one, and mm. I I just he has not looked the same. And so to me, what Will Levis was able to do, how he was able to connect, how he was able to make even throwing at the feet of Derrick Henry when Derrick Henry wasn't even looking at it to avoid a sack. Ryan Tannehill's taking that sack. Like he's Ryan Tannehill it. is creating a he's he's eating it hardcore. He, he there's no doubt in my mind that in that same exact moment, that same exact play, Tannehill's eating that sack. Or he's throwing like a weird interception or something, but more than likely he's taking that sack. So to me, I think this is a wild departure from 2023 Ryan Tannehill. Now, do I think that Will Levis is going to go on to be 2019 or 2020 um, Ryan Tannehill? No, I, I mean, I I don't, I think that, that he will give this team, if given the chance to stay the starter, I think he will give this team a lot better opportunity to win games than Ryan Tannehill. And I've thought that this whole whole season after that Saints game, I was just I looked at Ryan Tannehill, I was like, this is not the same guy. Mm. And I thought that when you were at three and three, I wrote about it. I said, I am not sure that Will Levis couldn't have got you to three and three. Or sorry, they were two and four. Two and four. I'm not sure that Will Will Levis couldn't have got you to two and four, just in a different fashion. Right. It may not look the same. It may be different games, but I'm not sure that Will Levis couldn't have gotten you there. And then after watching that game yesterday, I think he could. Now I got did get asked a question because obviously Marcus Mariota is and Ryan Tannehill's debuts are eerily similar. Now Will Levis is is more impressive to me. Because it's against a better team defensively, but also how he scored the points. Like you gotta remember, there is a lot of like screens for some dump offs. Yeah, that game. Yeah. Yep. So this is a little bit different to me. I want to say this though, because he goes the the guy that asked me this, his name is James, and he goes, "Can what's going to make this different than Mariota's career? Like what is going to make Will Levis different?" and the first From a thing prospect that, standpoint, yeah, it's not close. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it. I even I wasn't a Marcus fan, by the way, either. Okay. So maybe I just you know am whoever I'm not a fan of is going to end up throwing four touchdowns in their debut game. But I wasn't a Marcus fan, so <laughs> uh, I was a big fan of the trade back or trade for Philip Rivers. There was two different options there. I liked both options over Marcus at the time. Okay. I will look at it this way is that Will Levis is an entirely he's entirely differently wired than Marcus as far yes. as a competitor as far as someone Marcus never wanted to change he wanted to be that aloha attitude and if that's what he wants to do you know hang tin or whatever and all that he's going to do the same thing he always does every off season but from everything we've heard from Will Levis transferring to Kentucky in the off season, all this stuff that we've heard about Will Levis is that Will Levis is a competitor and always striving to make himself better. We even, of course, you were spared having to hear Beth Mow Mowens or Mowens, whatever her name is, and uh, James. I've heard Loft nothing but bad things. Yeah. Really. They were terrible. But the one thing they did bring up was that when they were talking to Will Levis, he even talked about, I had a really rough practice heading into their extended vacation time. So the, we heard from Ian Rappaport that before they went on like their bi-week vacation that was like a couple of days long, he was getting reps with the ones and he he wasn't very happy with his performance. And then he came back and he says, I came back that next week and basically he rocked it. He he corrected everything he needed to correct. And there are things Will Levis has to work on to be successful against Pittsburgh. That's something we'll talk about on Thursday. It's because we're we're trying to be positive, positive vibes only. That's right. And and right now, they I I, I need Carth Rand Carthon to trade Ryan Tannehill. And the reason why is because I am death deathly scared <laughs> that Mike Vrabel, if he's healthy, is gonna somehow go back to Ryan Tannehill. And so like I just need it off my plate. 
and yeah, now, you're scared today's... because he probably will. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> and Monday's today's presser, he kind of was like he hesitated, and he kind of was like he wasn't it was as very non-committal, stern on it. But I'm afraid that with Will Levis going to Pittsburgh on a short week is going to expose some flaws that we didn't see versus the Falcons. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a healthy Tannehill still on the roster, just a little scared.